The double reverse 4 bar is a favorite lift type of many an engineer due to its height, speed, and stability. However, it is also among the most complicated lifts due to its complex linkages and spacing. This video is my attempt to explain and help provide some resources on how to build this lift. And welcome to the Kepler Guide to the Double Reverse 4 Bar. Often referred to as the DR4B or RD4B, this lift revives on the common and simple 4 bar lift design. I have a whole video on this lift design that you can watch by clicking here in the corner, but the basic principle is that when you link two bars in parallel, if they're spaced out properly, you can move the bars closer to each other or split them apart, and the bars will always stay parallel. The double reverse 4 bar uses two of these 4 bar lifts connected to gears, which means that when you extend one 4 bar lift, the other follow. This allows you to effectively get twice the reach while still taking up the same amount of space. As the lifts nest inside of each other like so, leading to yet another name of this lift, the bowtie lift. For this lift design, I use two 84 tooth gears, which aren't the most space efficient, but I like them because I can securely mount the bars to them. Aside from attaching your two bars to the gears, you also need to make two bars with just bearing flats on them to make up the rest of the lift. In order to ensure clearance, I put the bearing at the far end of the bar rather than a couple holes off the bar like with the gear. These must be spaced equally to the other bar to ensure that everything stays parallel. After measuring the gears so I know where to put the axles, I put bearing flats on a piece of C-channel, one for each gear and one at each end for the other bar. Make two of these. These are the central bar that makes up one end of each 4 bar setup. After making these, I took shaft collars and put them on the 4 axles and spaced out the gears. I put each 4 bar setup on a different side of the middle bar before putting them together in the middle. This can be difficult, especially because you have to try your best to make sure that the bars connected to the gears are parallel when they mesh, otherwise the lift will not collapse as desired. After connecting both bars in the middle, we must connect the ends of the bars together. After measuring the spacing on the middle bar, we move that spacing over to the final bars. This long piece of C-channel represents where it would be mounted to the robot, and this shorter piece represents where the instrument would be mounted. I'm using screw joints here, but you may wish to use axles instead. And there you have it! A few rubber bands later and it extends. Of course, there's still the issue of powering the lift, but there are multiple ways to do so. Some teams like to mount their motors in the middle, where the lifts mesh, but this can be a wiring mess and adds extra weight. On my team's robot for the In The Zone competition, we powered our robot by mounting a gear to one of the ends of the bars connecting to the robot and powering that gear. Of course, this isn't everything. There is definitely more to the mighty double reversed 4 bar, but this gives you a good base. You could replace one of the 4 bars with a 6 bar for extra height. You could use PID control to ensure that the lift is always level, or you could use screw joints for extra stability. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, then there's a button for that. If you want to see more of what I do, subscribe to show your support. And if you're interested, check out some more of my VEX tutorials, which give brief overviews of the concepts and techniques behind some of the robot designs you see. I also make other robots besides VEX, such as Stompbot, my one-pound combat robot repurposed from a guitar pedal. Thanks for watching, and keep experimenting.